Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. And uh, welcome to another bike review on this absolutely beautiful summer's day. Now that's something I haven't been able to say very often this year. 2023 here in Blighty has been the worst summer. In fact, I think it's possibly the worst summer I can remember. It's been basically cold, miserable and wet. Now I know in other parts of the world they've had all together different troubles so I'm not really complaining but it has been somewhat disappointing. Anyway, I digress because we're here as I say for another bike review. Today I'm uh, once again on the Triumph Bobber. This time I'm, I'm on the special edition, the chrome version. A beautiful looking bike and uh, if you stick around and stay tuned I'll tell you what I think of it. Okay, so I say I'm once again on the bobber because I have ridden the bobber before, but I have to say it was a long time ago. It was back in, I think, 2017, about six years ago, something like that, when I last had the original version of the bike from Triumph. I had it for a couple of weeks, so I really enjoyed it. In fact, I think I described it as one of my favourite of the Bonnevilles at that point in time. So it's going to be interesting to see if I still think that at the end of this review. Since then, there have been some changes to it, of course on this one most notably the chrome paintwork etc which we'll have a look at in a second. But also some changes at the front end, some changes to the engine internals, basically it's evolved, some evolutionary changes. Alright, before we get on to how it rides, as usual, let's take a look at the bike. Alright, let's take a look at this special edition bob of them. Special edition because it's got this chrome paintwork, let me show you that first. I mean it is absolutely beautiful what Triumph have done here. I do like the little um, triangular logo that put on here and then they've got this beautiful chrome work on the tank which I think is uh, probably done at Hinkley so I'm wondering whether this special edition is actually made at Hinkley as opposed to in the Thailand factory. Not that that makes any difference to me but it's just uh, something I note. Anyway that looks really really nice. Around the front here I mentioned there were some differences to the front end of the bike. Notably this front end now this uh, has a much bigger almost balloon like tyre and the front end has just been generally beefed up which I think just makes the bike look a bit better than that original version of the bobber. And then the really important thing for me, dual discs now, one of my big complaints of the original bobber was just that the front brakes weren't up to the job. Well, maybe it wasn't just me that moaned about that, because now, look, we've got two discs on the front, which makes a big difference. But they do do a lovely job of these, just the attention to detail on this bike. So things like in the LED headlight here, you've got this little T for Triumph in there, looks great. Um, coming around here, of course, like they do on all the Bonnevilles, but you've got this nice sort of blood red spark plug connector, which just harps back to the old days, doesn't it? Uh, I love the pipes on here. The thing that um, Triumph do very well with all the Bonnevilles is making them tidy. I mean look at that, you can see through the engine there's not much in the way of extraneous pipes and wires. It's all hidden in there nicely. I love what they do with the pipes, the fact that they hide all the uh, catalytic converters and stuff underneath the bike, making it look like it's got straight through pipes even though of course it hasn't. Not so keen on the fake carbs and I'm not so keen on the um, ignition um, position being there as well especially as to lock the steering and I forget this every time you have to lock the steering using the keys in that little spot there and I forget that every time anyway coming around the bike um, back end so they don't all come with a 360 camera that's an extra <laughs> back end I'm not sure about but you're not looking at that when you're riding it I mean two minds about that I do like the fact that it's actually got an exhaust pipe on either side oh somebody's speeding down next to me I do uh, like the balanced look of it with the two pipes and yeah overall a beautiful job of the Starling. Alright, welcome back aboard the Mighty Bobber. So how does she stack up then from a riding point of view? Well I have to say comfort wise, I'm in kind of two minds, it's, it's quite unusual this one. I complain about cruisers with feet forward riding positions uh, and I'm really chuffed to say that this, the Bobber, comes as standard with mid-set pegs. Although they're mid-set in a kind of Bonneville kind of way in that they are arguably slightly forward of underneath you if you have a look on the 360 camera you see I've got a quite an acute bend in my knee here and my feet are below my knees as opposed to out front as they would be on say a Speedmaster or something or a Harley something like that and I do generally speaking prefer mid-set pegs but what I would say on the bobber is that means you are quite crunched up now I'm not a particularly big person at five foot eight I'm told I have long legs I've got a 32 inch legs uh, and this means on this particular bike with these mid-set pegs my legs feel or my knees feel as if they're up around my knees a bit the good news is it's really low seat 
means you can get my I can get my feet flat down on the floor so it's confidence inspiring in that sense but uh, I do feel quite cramped on here and I'm not a big bloke I think that's what I'm saying handlebars on here nice and flat cruisy type bars front well, the top half of me is slightly leant forward in a slightly more sporty position than you would be on a typical cruiser which helps I think a bit with the way it handles this is uh, one of my favourite little handling rows, all too short, with some nice bends and quite bumpy as well, so good test of suspension. Through here, yeah, she goes really nicely. Suspension's a little bit uh, harsh on its factory setting, assuming that's what this is on. You could do with softening up a little bit. But handling wise, for such a long bike with some relatively raked out geometry, you don't have to manhandle it around the corners very much. Yeah, she does handle nicely this. The seat on here, by the way, is adjustable. You have to use a spanner, but if you are longer than me, taller than me, you can move the seat back to stretch your legs out slightly. So, uh, and this appears to be on its kind of shortest setting. So I might be being a little bit unkind, saying that it's not particularly comfortable and that I feel crunched up. Right, quick accelerate. Ah, torque on this bike is immense. Quickly nip past here. No problem overtaking the amount of power that this has on tap 1200 cc engine of course out of the uh, likes of the speed twin bike that i own so i know very well it's also in the speedmaster and the focus on this engine is all about low down torque and grunt and that is what i like because as jay leno says all the fun is between 30 and 70 well i think he says something like that and i tend to agree and this bike is ideally suited for that it's not ideally suited, I'd say, as a long-distance tourer. But uh, if you're an enthusiast rider like myself, and coming out on a Sunday afternoon, or coming out for a ride in the sunshine like this around the lanes, then this is a perfect grin-inducing machine. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the spec is, does it, on a bike. It's about how they make you feel, and this makes you feel very good indeed. But, as it's a review, talking about the spec, I should really quickly take you through the numbers, shouldn't I? So let's do that now. All right, let's talk the numbers then, starting off with the engine here, an engine that I'm very familiar with because it's pretty much the same as the one in my Speed Twin. It's also in the Speedmaster. This is the 1200cc liquid-cooled parallel twin, 270-degree crank, which makes it sound really good, 77 brake horsepower at 6,100 RPM and 106 newton meters of torque at 4,000 RPM. All about the low-down grunt on these engines, and they are absolutely brilliant brakes at the front I'm delighted to say it now has twin 310 mil discs and Brembo two pot uh, calipers at the back end it's got this single 255 mil disc and a single pot caliper suspension wise at the front you've got these beefy looking 47 mil shower cartridge forks they're not adjustable but uh, yeah they do look beefy and at the back you've got this monoshock hidden cleverly underneath the seat so it looks like this is a hard tail but of course the whole back end articulates seat height on the bike is nice and adjustable from 690 to 700 millimeters so lovely and low no problems getting your feet on the deck the wet weight of the bobber is 251 kilograms so it is a heavy old beast but thanks to that low seat you don't really notice it being a problem now this fuel tank might look lovely in its chrome finish but I have to say it's not great as far as capacity is concerned. Only 12 litres and I remember when I had one of these before I was only getting about 100 miles to a tank so uh, yeah the fuel capacity is not large on these. Electronics wise not much to talk about really just the uh, two riding modes as I mentioned I think the rain and road and of course it's got ABS. Price wise this particular bobber will cost you 13795 for this chrome special edition. Uh, if you want the non-chrome version they're about 800 quid less. And just for comparison purposes I paid exactly the same amount uh, for my Kawasaki Z900 RS by the way. So that gives you an indication of what good value this is I think. Just in case you're wondering the colour scheme on this is known as chrome and jet black. You can get what they call a chrome pack for it which gives you some dresser bars, um, a shorter mud guard, a side pannier, things like that. Uh, as I think I mentioned heated grips are available, high handlebars and all sorts of accessories in the usual Triumph way. Okay so much for the uh, numbers on paper then. Let's kind of forget them from now on because the bike's got plenty of go. It's about as I say how a bike makes you feel isn't it? And this bike just makes you feel cool. I think it's a combination of these flat bars the fact that it does make you sit forward a little bit it makes you feel like a bit of a cool dude now i know i'm not at all but as long as i feel like that when i'm riding it then that's fine isn't it that's what it's all about it's a feel-good bike whilst i'm stuck behind the van let's talk about the switch gear and what we're looking at here very simple bike this it's got two riding modes rain and road and uh, that's all you need really isn't it so that's absolutely fine very easy to change them by this big mode button here on the right 
You've got hazard lights on the right as well, start and stop lights on this side. And your trip, your device to change the trip counter on the little LCD panel is just here, little button there. And that's basically it. This one has got heated grips as well, heated, which is a must for the UK, I think. So the switch gear is lovely, simple, it's tactile, you know when you've pressed it, it's typical Triumph. What about what you're looking at? Well, I have to say one thing I'm really pleased about on the bobber is you've got this sort of um, brake fluid reservoir. It's not the sort of piss pot design. I prefer that any day over the plastic one. That looks good. Something I complained about previously on the bobber is the uh, dial on here. I would prefer if it had the two dials, the same as you have on the T120 or indeed the Speed Twin. But given you've got this big central dial, the same as you have on bikes like the Speedmaster, I have to say on this version of the bike it's not too bad because they've surrounded it in this nice black anodized colour and because the face is black with chrome decals as well it actually looks quite neat on this so I'm not going to complain about that dial on this bike I think it looks alright on the bobber easy to read much better having a big analog face than something TFT like they'd put on the rocket on the rocket you've got that thing that looks like some sort of Fisher Price toy out of the 80s this is a much better display than that and I love the sort of attention to detail on it, the fact that it says Bonneville at the top here in this little chromed out bit, or brushed steel bit. The fact that it says Triumph on the clamp here is really nice. They just do a nice job of attention to detail on these bikes, don't they Triumph? They really know what they're doing there. Something perhaps I'm not so keen on are these big elastic bands that are holding some of the cables here. It's not terrible, I'm kind of clutching at straws to find things I don't like. But wouldn't it be nice if these cables were in the handlebars, again like they would do on the Rocket which is a nice, neat, tidy presentation. But yeah, generally speaking, what you're looking at, what you touch, really nice. All bar end mirrors as well, which are nice. They work well, no vibration. And they're well in keeping with this sort of factory custom vibe, I suppose. You could say this has, but yeah. Now wrong with that. Let me just try the brakes. Front brake is pretty good on here, actually. Which is something that I uh, complained about a lot on the previous bobber. And one of the incremental changes they've made is this bike does now have those twin discs on the front and it makes all the difference in bringing this bike to a stop i tell you the old brakes used to be rubbish these let me just try them again yeah nice abs cuts in quite quickly but they do a pretty good job of stopping let's just try the rear while there's nothing behind us yeah the rear is absolutely fine as well so no problem with the brakes gearbox on here typical triumph nice and snickable not getting any false neutrals or having any trouble finding neutral or anything like that the clutch is nice and light with that slip and assist clutch that triumph put on their bonnevilles these days works really nicely yeah mechanically it's all good So I'm rather somewhat struggling to find something negative to find about the bike, other than the fact that it's got some elastic bands on the handlebars. I suppose the jury is out on what the comfort would be like over a long journey on this. The seat isn't that well padded. But other than that, I really can't find anything about the bike I don't like. Oh, maybe the suspension could be a little bit softer. But no, I like it a lot. The most important thing is how a bike makes you feel, and this one makes you feel damn good, as I say. Would I still class it as one of my favourite Bonnevilles? Uh, yeah, yeah, I probably would to be fair, although there's not really any Bonnevilles I don't like. I just love what Triumph do with this range. I of course love the Speed Twin because I own one of those. I very much like the Speedmaster, which is probably my second favourite bike. This probably comes in an equal third in the Bonneville range with the uh, Scrambler 900, which is another the range that I really like, Triumph do these really well. I haven't seen that many, in fact I don't know if I've ever seen any of these uh, bobbers on the road, so I'm not sure how much of a big seller they've been for Triumph. I know when they came out all those, all those years ago, it doesn't seem very long ago but it was as I say probably 2016 ish something like that when we first saw them, they did seem a radical departure to anything we'd seen before from Triumph or anyone else really. Uh, and I kind of got the impression they were going to sell a lot of hot cakes, but I don't know that they've actually done that. But uh, I am just guessing on the basis that I don't see many of them on the road. So if you did buy one, you'd be in an exclusive brotherhood of bobber owners, I think. That new balloon front tyre on here, slightly bigger than it was on the, again, on the previous Bonneville that I rode, 
doesn't seem to make any negative impact on the handling. This bike handles much better than you'd expect a cruisy type bike with such long geometry to handle. So that's something that surprised me in a good way. And uh, Triumph have made some subtle changes to the internals on the engine as well since I originally rode the bobber. There's no vibration through the engine. The bike is not characterless. It's got bags of character in fact this bike but not in a bad way. You're not vibrating like hell. The mirrors are nice and clear. I'm not having my fillings rattled out by vibrations on the engine. They've done a good job on smoothing that out. So yeah classy number Triumph. Nicely done. Nice and easy to ride this as well. This would be a good first bike because it is so confidence inspiring and the fact that you can get your feet down. It's not hard to ride like some cruisers are. Quite the opposite. In fact it's very easy to ride. It's a lovely place to be. Particularly on a glorious day like this. Look at this. It's absolutely beautiful. Alright so I hope you've uh, enjoyed my reacquaintance with the bobber. I shouldn't have left it so long because it is a nice, a nice bike. Let me know if you're a bobber owner if there's anything you think I've missed that prospective owners might like to know stick that in the comments below it'd be good to build a sort of a resource for prospective buyers in the comments or indeed anything else you want to stick in there I love reading the comments it's always good to hear from you if this is your first time to the channel don't be a stranger do hit that subscribe button and that way I can talk to you next time on the next video I'm going to enjoy riding the bike for another half an hour or so I'm going to go the long way home as you do experience the bobber a bit more but that's it for now look forward to speaking to you again soon until then this has been the Missenden Flyer cheerio oh I feel those happiness endorphins coursing through my veins Absolutely glorious, isn't it? A few things I'd rather be doing on a lovely summer's day. I think of a couple of things, but uh, this is high up there on the list. This is a little bit of a cheeky corner. hoping you can uh, hear the exhaust note by the way here. I don't think I mentioned on the review how good this bike sounds. It's, uh, it's got a lovely sound out of those standard pipes. It's not obnoxiously loud, but it's loud enough just to put a little grin on your face, you know what I mean? Oh, there's the white fans. so much uh, shove in this engine it's just brilliant mm, a nice whiff of food coming out of that pub which reminds me it's the time I got home and had some lunch well I envy all you who are out on your bike tours today it'd be fantastic to be doing this all day and all day tomorrow and all day the next day yeah that'd be good note to self do more bike tours right i'll shut up now see you soon <laughs>